today I thought that we would take a chance to talk a little bit about uh, the Siege of Winterfell event that is going on right now. Uh, so my team is actually in the middle of our, our battle right now. Um, I hopped out for a second just so I could kind of show you guys the, the start of it, but frankly this one was kind of over early, but I thought that because this was a calm match, it would be a good time to kind of do a quick overview of what the whole map is, how the game mode works, um, kind of some of the basic strategy that you can have within it. Um, I, I would recommend doing all the tutorials and everything else that's been sent and posted. Um, they're definitely very, very helpful. Um, but overall, basically what happens is you'll be planted and you'll have your castle here. I know, I know, I did, you know, my silly, I forgot to change my skins, but we kind of weren't facing a very competitive alliance, so I wasn't really caring that much. Um, but um, just like with the Alliance Conquest, your your stats that you go in right before you enter the match um, are the stats you'll have for it, with the exception of your army buff. You cannot use army buff sizes in Siege of Winterfell event, event, which I think is actually a really great idea, and I, I hope that they do that for Alliance Conquest too. But um, basically what happens is you will create your own regiment. As you can see, I have my regiment spread out. I have one sitting here at Winterfell. And then I have two sitting down here in the enemy hive. Um, yeah, does anyone do anything? Uh, no, it looks like it's uh, pretty dull and boring. I can hotkey if I just click on two for this one or one for this guy. Um, oh, it seems like we got kind of hit a little bit. Um, so basically, you have this individual control of each of your troops, and you can see that we have a bunch of other troops. We're all just sitting in their hive. Oh, let's see if we can get any hits on this guy. Race over here trying to hit him, but he's probably going to be dead by the time we get there. Um, unfortunately, when your alliance is a little stronger than your opponent, um, this is basically what happens, and you end up just sitting in the opponent's hive the whole time, and whenever they send out any troops, you just immediately go and kill them. Um, so it's a... Uh, little underwhelming to say the least but it does give us this downtime to talk about the event so um, you can move your guys around by just kind of maneuvering them not too difficult um, you just kind of right click now in terms of setting up who your troops are what I'll do it real quick is I will recall these guys um, so you can hit this garrison button or the return button uh, if I hit that return button then they are going to return to my castle two seconds, one second, now they're gone. You'll see that I can here, click here to create an army. Now what I've done is I've made an army preset, which you can do once you get into the map, but basically what I do is I click on my commander. Um, in this case, I want Seg, since he is my lord, by far the strongest of my commanders. I'm gonna go down to Seg. Um, I like Rob, I've awakened him a lot, and as you can see, he has 21,000 troops um, that he brings with him, so that's a lot, that's really helpful. Um, and then my last one I'm just going to bring is Meryl Peak. Um, I'm just bringing him because he has such great uh, cav attack stats and cav health stats. As you can see, all the stats are multiplied by about 5. That's how you're getting a cavalry attack of 150 rather than 30% usually. Um, so that's a pretty big buff um, that you're getting in, the, in these. So you definitely want to make sure that you're using uh, some strong commanders that are going to be able to make the most out of that added buff. Um, so this is the set that I use there, I confirm this, um, and then I usually just use a full T4 set. Again, this is not including my, my buffed army size, this is just my base army size with those commanders, but again, having those awakened commanders um, that have that extra army size is, is making a big difference, and that's you know 21,000 versus uh, just 11,000 on my Meryl Peak, so that, that's, you know, that's a big difference in my marching size. So start marching. These guys come out over here. I'm gonna have them take the long march back all the way down here. Oop, that one's uh, it's a little bit boring, but there we go. Uh, they're walking back down here. Now to quickly look at the map, you have the side that is basically the, the Stark side, and you have down here the Greyjoy side. Um, then you have these outposts, Stark outpost on each side, um, these, if you go to the first capture, you get 200 points. You also get 80 a minute afterwards. Um, and you have the same thing on the Greyjoy side. They're the reciprocal again with that 200 points for the first capture, 80 points per minute afterwards. Um, then you have these four outposts in the middle that are all all kind of around Winterfell. And those each get 600 for the first capture and then 180 a minute 
um, per minute afterwards. So you can see that that's a much bigger buff. You kind of think of this as the uh, the ports in Alliance Conquest, and these are just the the outposts. Um, it's kind of a similar idea, and those central ones are the harder ones to hold because those are closer to Winterfell, um, which is you can see is right here. That's the big uh, the big prize you're trying to get. Um, so one of the things that will happen in this event is you can have someone who takes the resources from Winterfell to one of your outposts. So right now it looks like uh, Buddy Venom has got it. Um, he hasn't started moving yet. Um, let's just double check, make sure. Um, yeah. um, I will. I will admit that sometimes in this event uh, you you will be moving, but no one will see that you've been moving. So there, there's a chance that he is walking this stair right now, um, and we're just not seeing it. I would guess that he is, and it's just a little bit of a bug. Yep, there you go. He said he was moving, and no worries. Just a bug. Um, there's just a visual bug that it looks like he's still here. He's probably walking to one of the uh, nearby outposts, and once he walks it to an outpost, we will increase our resources that we gathered. Um, the last two structures to mention are the armory, which is very similar to the Tower of the Warrior in Alliance Conquest. Um, you get 120 per minute for holding it and 400 for the first capture, but this also gives a buff of 50% total attack and total defense. Um, so that's pretty good. And again, that 120 minutes is actually pretty solid. Similarly, the Hot Spring is kind of like the Tower of the, of the Mother, um, in which this one gives you a bit of a healing buff. Um, you increase your healing speed by 100%, then you get that same 120 per minute and 400. One of the cool things about this event is that unlike Alliance Conquest, um, you can get a lot higher like per minute uh, buildings because there are more buildings. So right now we're getting 1,280 per minute. So we're easily going to clear 80,000. And you have this whole uh, like kind of sending out the resources from Winterfell, um, which can add to your point total even more, um, which is how you see a lot of alliances getting up into the 100,000 uh, point, which is probably where we're expecting to be somewhere around in this match. But as you can see, it's pretty dull other than that. Um, when you're facing an opponent that isn't doing a lot, um, it gets a little boring. Um, we had a little bit of fun at the start. Um, I was pretty pleased. I, I'm you know in fifth right now, and overall, I'm fourth in our alliance, so not bad. Um, Healing-wise, you know, in third, I kind of raced out there to do a little bit of fighting. Um, one thing I will mention that is an important thing to note. Uh, ooh, ooh. Well, I don't think I'm going to get there in time. Yeah, not going to make it in time. Um, one thing that is really important to understand about this is that the type of troops you're using does affect the marching speed. And whether it's cavalry or spears or infantry, um, that, that changes the marching speed of your troops. And even the type of like within cavalry, whether it's T1, T2, T3, T4, um, the weaker the troop, the faster they move. So actually, I usually use a T1 only regiment right here um, to be carrying our, our loot if we need to. Now, I've kind of, you know, I told them I was going to be recording this, so I said, like, if someone else wants to carry, they can. But normally in our competitive matches, I've carried for us. And I will tell you guys that we, our last match was actually really competitive. We went against a 29 billion alliance. Um, which is a close to 10 billion more than us and we actually beat them and we still got 80,000 points, which is pretty impressive the basic strategy that we had um, That I that I can tell you is essentially we had three rally leaders um, And they were kind of the ones leading each party. We had one go down this, uh, this left side Take hold on. Sorry One start here get Stark outpost and then branch off to the armory, and the other side do the same thing, starting on this outpost, getting up to the hot spring. Um, and then you have another group go in the middle, and those prioritize taking these two outposts right off the bat, and holding the Winterfell area. So what we then did is we had, again, one big rally lead in each area, which kind of splits the focus of, the, of our opponent. And then we were able to hold the Winterfell area, and what we do is because there is this landlocked nature to Winterfell on all sides except for these openings um, to basically towards each team's uh, like base camp. Um, we set up in that little area to prevent them from getting into the Winterfell area at all. Um, and that allowed us to hold it really easily 
and then secure that for the resources. And then as long as you hold your half of the, the buildings and you're getting those Winterfell resources, you're going to win. Um, we kind of found as we went on that we were able to really fight them pretty easily. And we were able to contest for these outposts that were nearby us. Um, and by the end of the match, we actually held all the outposts. And I think, I think we may have had both the, these uh, mini outposts as well, which is pretty cool. So, um, yeah, that went really well, and we really had a lot of fun with it. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about this in my next video. Um, I'm going to be talking a little bit about, like, the, the power um, and the way that this game works now and, and just, like, what power actually means. Um, and I'll be touching on that a little bit. I think that our alliance is a great example of an alliance that is much, much stronger than our power might initially seem. Um, I think that we have a lot of guys that are... are really strong fighters even if their their power isn't as inflated as, as some might see um get a lot of just like kind of very farm heavy alliances um that does not mean that we're like a, a insanely strong alliance but um i think that the fact that we being 21 billion alliance were able to beat a 29 billion alliance um just goes to show that power may not be everything um but that's it for today i don't want to make this too long of a video but i just wanted to take some time to review um exactly how this event works um, you know, give you guys kind of a, a preview of what it looks like for us. I wanted, I didn't want to record the start of this one just because it's like kind of boring and, and nothing was just like, sure there was some action going on and I wanted to be on Discord to be uh, talking to my guys and, and directing them around just for the start in case this team put up a fight. But once it was clear that they weren't, I, I decided to hop off and, and record this quick one for you. But um, if we have another close one that's going to be actually good, my plan is to record it and, and make a video out of it so we can talk about it. Um, but I, I like to kind of talk while I'm recording, so I don't uh, necessarily want to do it if it's not going to be a, a really fun one that's going to be good to watch back and review. Um, in about 20 seconds, the Winterfell resource is going to drop, and I'm just going to quickly show um, what that looks like. I'm not going to say let me grab resources just to show you guys what it looks like. Um, so just to show you, I mean, like, these guys move really quickly right now because it's all T1s. Um, and they're mostly dead because I, I kind of raced out with them. Um, but I just want to show what this looks like. So if I start grabbing them, all you got to do is right-click on Winterfell and it starts picking up the resources. And now once I've grabbed them, you'll see that it kind of hovers in this icon over me. So now it says, congratulations, Tyrion Lannister, you've got it. I now need to march to this nearby outpost. Um, and it doesn't matter which, you can do to any of the ones that your side controls and march it there. Now, what you'll notice is that this is really, really slow. Um, all of a sudden, my guys move really painfully slowly. It's gonna take them three minutes and 15 seconds to get there. So I'm not gonna make you sit through all of that, but that's the that's basically the process. Um, as you can see, if you look at like Mike over here, his troops can get there in two minutes, and he's even got some, some infantry, some spear, um, but even though he's got those weaker troops, he isn't holding the loot, so he doesn't have to worry about it. Um, actually, the, the last, last thing I did want to show is some of the reports. Um, just what this kind of looks like. Um, so one of the interesting things that I'll note, if you see a report like this where you have no wounded or seriously wounded and the other side does, what this means is that the other side was actually fighting someone else. And this is the advantage to strategy in this, is that my troops were attacking his and weren't getting attacked back. So that's really great for me. I mean, that's all positive numbers for me. Even if I'm facing a massive whale, if you hit them in smart ways where a bunch of you gang up on them at once, they can only attack one person at a time. So as a result, you may not lose any troops when you attack them. Um, but as you can see, most of the time it's kind of one-on-one -on -one hits. And again, this alliance was a good deal weaker than us, so we had some pretty uh, solid hits in. Um, I'm not gonna go through the stats of any of these people just because I don't want to reveal their stats. Um, but uh, yeah, as you can see, that's pretty much how it goes. Um, whoa, was that a zero zero? Hold on. Kind of looked weird. Could have sworn I saw one on there. Oh, here, here. What the heck? And so I just want to see more details on this. Why did we not? I was full cav. He was full imp. That must be bugged. Yeah, this looks like more of a real hit. Yeah, that's much better. Um, I don't even, I don't think I even have many of my talents on right now. I'm just kind of 
winging it because this isn't a very tough opponent for us. But uh, yeah, that's that's basically what the battle reports look like. Um, so that's that's it going to be it for this video. Uh, my troops are still making their way to the outpost. Um, let's see what how much further they've got. Um, another minute. Yeah, I'm not going to make you guys sit through it, but basically once they get there, you would see the this number spike a little bit more um, and then continue to go up and up and up. But that's pretty much it. That's what this event is. I really think it's a lot of fun when you're facing a more interesting opponent. Unfortunately, like I said, I mean, it's not their fault. This, this alliance just is not uh, even close to as big as us or as strong as us. They have maybe one guy that can really fight with us, but... Uh, as you can see, you know, we've got Diver and, and Rye, and they're, they're just they're a little too strong for them. Um, their Red Rum guy, he, he's strong, but he, he can't really hold his own with, with our, our whales. So as a result, um, that's you know makes for a pretty boring and dull event. But I'm telling you guys, when you get a good match, this is this is up there as one of the best. All right, I, I've stalled enough. We got just 10 more seconds. You'll see as my troops enter this area, you'll see our number spike. So right about now, there you go, went up about 6,000. Uh, so that's about it. I'm going to call it here for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, like I said, this is uh, my first time I'm kind of doing one on Siege of Winterfell, but I hope that it was interesting and informative to you all. Uh, it's a really fun event. I really do enjoy it, and I love uh, Siege of Winterfell, Lion's Conquest. Those are some of the best events in the game. So anyway, this has been Tyrion Lannister. Have a great rest of your day, folks, and I'll see you next time.